Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews and today of course the backpack, the video backpack and this is the board that the backpack uses. This is my final prototype handmade board, hand etched board and as you can see um, it's smaller than the old board because what I wanted to do, the old board was a bit bigger, I wanted to make this board so that it was the same size as one of these cameras, you know these little camera boards here. Um, once you cut the little edge off, if you're using the 600 TV line camera that I reviewed a while ago, if you cut the outside edges off you end up with a board that is this size so effectively it means that when you put them together they'll go into a little box that is uh, or go into a tube even squares tube that will not have bits poking out except the antenna so there you go that's the size of that board matches that board makes it all a lot smaller of course it makes it a little bit harder to build but um, anyone who's had modest skills with a soldering iron can put one of these together and the bits are so damn cheap that even if you stuff it up and you have to do two or three attempts to get it working well you'll still come out streets ahead of buying a bought one and it'll work better as well because as you can see it's got the uh, cloverleaf antenna on the top there which gives it a much better performance and this one I'm also using the very small UBEC rather than the bigger UBEC that I was using before so the whole thing's working at a whole lot lighter which was if you're flying on something like an AXN it's a whole lot better if it's lighter. Now what I've done here is I've done a sort of a, a diagram of the FPV backpack so let's have a look at how this thing all goes together or how the functional blocks work together to create a video transmitter system. Now let's take a look at this diagram of our FPV backpack and what have we got here we've got a number of functional blocks you can see these squares and little pictures I've drawn they're the different parts that go into the FPV backpack and the first and most important one of course is this this is our video transmitter it's a, a ready-made module and here they are this is one here now I'll just put it on the piece of paper so we know what it looks like that's it and you notice here I've written 3.3 volts beside this module because that's the maximum voltage that this little module will take that's in fact the best voltage to run it on if you run it on any more smoke will come out if you run it on any less then you get a very weak signal so it's important that we have 3.3 volts a very precisely regulated 3.3 volt supply for this little module now over here we have the battery and I have like typically in your FPV model for your powering your, your plane and your FPV gear you'll have a three cell lipo and here's a three cell lipo now these are nominally 11.1 volts but to keep things simple I'm just going to call it a 12 volt battery and that's what we have depicted here now of course over here we've got the camera and we all know these little board cameras they look like this Very nice and I've reviewed a couple of those in the past a few of those in the past this backpack will work with any camera that operates from 9 volts to 12 volts or you could actually go to uh, could actually go up to uh, sorry 5 volts if you want to go down to 5 volts if you need to this could be a 5 volt to not to 12 volt camera but we have to change a couple little things down here and I'll show you how to do that when we get on to building the actual backpack but in the meantime suffice to say we have a regulator here that will supply the camera so let's start drawing some lines let's connect all this stuff up what are we doing here well first of all let's take our voltage out of our battery at 12 volts it goes up here I've got a UBEC in here I'll tell you what that's about later it comes out and it goes into this voltage regulator so we started off with 12 volts and that voltage regulator drops it down to 3.3 volts and that goes up into our module so there's our power supply to power our transmitter module that's why we need that regulator also of course we've got our camera over here our camera needs 9 to 12 volts now we could just wire the camera straight to the battery just 12 volts straight through to the camera but that might cause some issues and the reason for that is that once we start powering our electric motor and everything on off this battery the ESC produces or not the ESC the, the speed controller produces a lot of noise on the 12 volt line so that noise will go straight through to the camera unless we do something to stop it and you may have seen FPV videos where when the engine is started up on the model the motor starts on the model there's all sorts of lines across the picture those are sometimes called Venetian blinds now that happens because that noise from the ESC is fed straight into the camera and comes back as video noise we don't want that another reason we don't want to put 12 volts into this camera or straight from the battery is that if we run these on 9 volts they actually uh, don't get so hot they don't seem to draw so much current so it makes life of the camera a little bit easier and also as our voltage here drops down the camera will behave more predictably because this will still get 9 volts even when this whether this is at 12 volts or 10 volts will still have 9 volts going into the camera so you get a more consistent picture even though these have a little regulator on board the regulators on there not quite so good so there we go so we need to take our 12 volts again and bring it down into this voltage regulator and then take it off to our camera as 9 volts so 9 volts out 
Now this is one of those little regulators, since I'm showing you what the bits look like. That's one of those little regulators. Look at the size of the damn thing. It's tiny, tiny little regulator. That's what we're going to use there and there. Uh, so now we've created a power supply for our transmitter module and power to our camera. The camera is now producing video, but we've got to connect the video from here into the module. And to do that, of course, there's a wire comes out. It's typically a yellow wire on most of these cameras. It comes out and we actually feed it through a capacitor into the module. And here's a capacitor, just so you know what they look like. A little device like that. They can look different. You get little square ones and all sorts. But um, we have a capacitor there. Now, you might be thinking, why have you got a capacitor there? Why can't we just wire the camera straight into the module? Well, the reason for that becomes obvious when you look a bit closer. Remember I said these modules only can stand 3.3 volts. But we're powering our camera with 9 volts. So in theory, or it's quite possible that too much voltage could come back through this lead into the module and cause issues with the module. So we put a capacitor in there. Capacitors are cool devices. They allow signals to travel through, but they don't allow direct current to travel through. So the current, the 9 volts from the camera, will be blocked from going into the module. But the video signal will go straight through and be used to transmit out to our ground station. Piece of cake. Now, we have another thing. Some people like to have a microphone on their FPV backpack. And when I asked, everyone said, yes, we want a microphone. So I've got a microphone. And microphones, the microphone we're going to use is a tiny, tiny little thing. Look at the size of it. It's not smaller than your fingernail. That's a little condenser microphone. So again, there's an audio in on this module. So we have a line comes down here. And again, we'll have another capacitor. And you'll see why in a moment. And that will connect up to our microphone. Now, a condenser microphone actually needs a certain amount of voltage to run. It needs to have a little voltage going on there. So we've had to bring a, volt, a wire down here, put a resistor in there. And that also goes off to our microphone. So again, because we've got DC going into our microphone, we need to have a capacitor to stop it flying back into the module. So that's why we have that capacitor. This resistor here is used to reduce the amount of current that would flow into the microphone. So basically it stops it drawing very much current. So that resistor there just to basically uh, uh, to limit the current that goes into the microphone. But there we go, there's our microphone. And we're all looking pretty sweet at the moment. Now, I mentioned earlier, of course, we've got this UBEC here. And why do we have this UBEC? Why can't we just connect the 12 volts straight onto this side of the regulator here and have 3.3 volts coming out? Well, this is where I have to get my maths hat on. And I'll show you what goes on here. I'm going to do some calculations. I have to move my paper up so we can get some spare space. These regulators have a maximum amount of power they can dissipate, a maximum amount of power they can actually... Um, release because what happens is whenever you have electrical current flowing through something with resistance it generates heat and the heat is measured in usually in milliwatts and let's work out how hot this little regulator here is going to get for example let's assume that our camera draws 0 0.1 amps which is not an unreasonable amount for a camera to draw and we've got 12 volts going in here 9 volts coming out so there's going to be 3 volts across our regulator there'll be 9 on, nine on there 12 on there a 3 volt difference and to work out the amount of power, we multiply the voltage times the current. So we have 3 volts times 0.1 amps equals 300 milliwatts, or 0.3 of a watt. That's how much power this little black thing has to dissipate. That, just, that amount of energy gets turned into heat, and it makes it get hot, and it gets conducted away by the surrounding air. Now that's quite a reasonable amount. That, that little device can handle 300 milliwatts without even blinking. But let's look at this one up here. If we ran... 12 volts into this side. Let's assume to make the math easier, we're going to run 12.3 volts into that side and take 3.3 volts out of that side. If we did that, there would be a 9 volt difference. So now we use the same formula here, but we have 9 volts. And I know this module here draws about 200 milliamps, 0.2 of an amp. 9 volts times 0.2 amps equals a whopping great 1.8 watts. So if we tried to get this regulator to reduce from 12 volts down to 3.3 volts, it would be trying to get rid of 1.8 watts of heat. That can't do it. It's too small to get rid of 1.8 watts of heat. It would overheat and it would shut down or fail and you'd lose your picture. You'd probably crash. So that's why we have the UBEC because the UBEC is another kind of regulator. The UBEC has the 12 volts going in and 5 volts coming out. So now instead of having 12 volts on here, we've only got 5 volts. So if we do the sums again, 5 volts minus 3.3 is, what's that? That's um, 1.7. So we now have 1.7 volts times 0 0.2 amps. means we've equals 340 milliwatts. Nothing. 
that's quite within the capabilities of that regulator to handle that. So that's where we get a bit of a saving on regulators. We can use a nice, low, small, cheap regulator by using this UBEC. And the other advantage is, of course, that um, we have this regulator here. We could use a UBEC just to take it down. You can get 3.3 volt UBEX. But the problem with UBEX is they're very noisy. The output's very noisy. It has lots of noise on top of the 5 volts. And by running it through this little regulator here, it chops off the noise. And that's another reason, as I said before, for running a regulator to our camera. It chops the noise off. Let's just have a look at what I'm talking about. Let's move the paper again so we've got more space to write on. Should have got a bigger piece of paper, really. Uh, let's assume we have an oscilloscope here. It's a high-tech paper-based oscilloscope. There we go. And down here we have 0 volts. Up here we have 15 volts. Excuse my writing. And this is time here. Time. Now if we were to connect up our 12 volt LiPo battery, we get a line on the oscilloscope at the 12 volt level. There we go. Simple. Easy. That's what it looks like when nothing's happening. But as soon as we turn on our motor, we raise our throttle and the ESC kicks in, the voltage will drop because we put a load on it. And because these brushless motors work with little tiny pulses of electricity rather than just a constant flow, you get little changes in the current draw. So you get pulses of voltage appearing on the battery line like this. That wiggly line is called noise. Now if we feed that into our camera, or if we feed it into our transmitter module, we're going to get lines and all sorts of rubbish, as I mentioned before. What we can do, however, is if we put in a 9 volt regulator here, then obviously that noise on the top is cut off, and we're going to use this part of the power out of the battery for the camera. So we don't get the noise, we get a nice smooth line there. So we get a line free picture. The camera sees just a smooth 9 volts. All that noise is chopped off by the regulator. That's why we have the regulator. So there we go. Now there's one other item on here that I need to add, and that's this. These are the little switches that control the channel you're on. Now there are up to eight channels with these little modules and you can't actually use all eight at once as I've discovered because if you have two adjacent channels there tends to be a bit of interference between the two so we've used three, you could probably use four channels at once get four models flying at once with these backpacks without any real interference between them. Um, this obviously just wires straight into the side. Now uh, that's pretty much the circuit diagram for our Backpack. So hey, you've seen how to design your own now. You could go out and design your own. There's all the math down here about the regulators and that's how it all wires up. And what we do then is I've converted that into a circuit board layout like this, as you can see. And if we look at the circuit board, you can see there's a little regulator in there, one of those little three terminal regulators like this one, just hiding in there. There's another one under that piece of wire. There's the little switches, there's a capacitor. Remember we've got some capacitors. These are little this other little black thing, square thing down there is another capacitor, a different value. On the back we've got our module as you can see, and then there's our antenna. And while I'm speaking of antennas, I bet you don't know what's inside one of those antennas. That's the one you get when you buy one of these transmitters or one of these receivers off the shelf like this one. You get an antenna like this, and it has written on it somewhere 5.8 gigahertz, so you know what frequency it's on. Now you might think that's full of wonderful goodness and joy, but in fact all that's in there is a little piece of wire that long. See this? little piece of wire here. So that long, it's about 11 or 12 mils, I think, maybe 14 mils, can't remember. And another little piece of copper or brass tubing about the same length. That's all you get in that whole lot. So most of this is full of air. It's pretty much empty. And that's why these things work so much better, because they're a much better design of antenna. These are really crude, and it's surprising they work at all in many cases. In fact, some cases, they don't work. Some of them are, the quality control sometimes is pretty crap. You get one of those 5.8 gig antennas, not very good at all. So when you make our own, we get better results. There it is. There is the circuit diagram for our FPV backpack. So there you go, that's basically how the bits go together to make a backpack. It's not how to put them together, but it's how they functionally relate to produce this little backpack board here that then goes, comes up to your camera now. Um, I was going to do a, show you how to etch your own boards and all that sort of stuff, but oh, to be totally honest, it's a lot of farting around. And I've gone to uh, one of the PC manufacturers in China and I've said, look, can you make me boards that look like this? Not with the bits on, but the bare boards. They said, yeah, no worries, no worries. So I've sent them a whole lot of money. They're going to make a whole lot of boards up, which will all be nicely silk screened with, you know, so you can't you have to worry about solder bridging the tiny spaces and things. Much easier to put together than a handmade board. Now, we'll be publishing the board layout. That'll be going up on the website very shortly. Uh, if you want to etch your own boards, you're welcome to do so. If you know how to etch them, then, you know, rip into it. But... Um, for those who are probably the vast majority you just want to buy a circuit board and put the bits on, then I'll give you the address uh, where you can purchase those as well. That's it. Next video, of course, is.
putting the bits on the board. I'm just waiting for my first set of boards to arrive from China when they do. Um, I will show you how to assemble the store-bought boards because they're going to be a whole lot better than these itch-it-yourself boards. Stay tuned. Next build video coming up as soon as those boards arrive.